Welcome to the next episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Shobhi Putani, Product Marketing Manager here at VMware. And I'm the VMware's uh, lead for AIML and DPUs. Uh, I lead messaging and positioning of uh, VMware Private AI, vSphere, and DPUs. In this series, vSphere Breakroom Chats, we bring VMware and partner experts to discuss VMware's vSphere and cloud products. These fabulous experts also share back their backgrounds, industry trends, and general tips for IT technical experts and our customers. Today, I'm very excited to bring back uh, Modi Beck here, uh, who's the Senior Director of Marketing Development at NVIDIA, uh, and also a wonderful uh, guest, uh, new guest, Neeraj Kapam, uh, who's the GM of Software Defined uh, Infrastructure at Lenovo. Modi leads the um, Modi leads NVIDIA's networking solutions for private clouds and for on-premise deployments and has been working within VMware on vSphere and v VCS networking solutions since ECX 4.0 was announced. Uh, Neeraj Kapam leads the Think Agile uh, branded hyperconverged infrastructure solutions uh, business. Welcome Neeraj and Moti. Glad to be here, Shobi. Thanks for inviting me again. Happy to Wonderful. be here. Outstanding. So jumping in, really excited uh, uh, to talk about the uh, the launch of dual DPUs with Lenovo and NVIDIA that we recently just did um, about a month or so back. Um, Lenovo, VMware, and NVIDIA have had a decade-long history now of collaboration on hybrid cloud and AI. A recent example being uh, the jointly developed private AI solution as well that we've done, VMware Private AI Foundation with NVIDIA on top of uh, Lenovo. Uh, so congratulations to Lenovo, um, Neeraj, yourself and team for being the very first to market with dual DPUs as part of the Think Agile uh, VXHCI appliance. So Neeraj, uh, really excited to have you on today. Do you mind just kind of giving us the use cases and industry trends that you think are, um, you know, why the DPUs are getting so much traction in the market? Yep, I'll talk about the big trend and then I'll get to the specific trends that are driving DPU interest. The really the big trend uh, that we see is enterprises investing heavily in hybrid AI architectures. It really started uh, many years ago with machine learning and deep learning investments and has really accelerated in the more recent times with generative AI and large language models. So that's the big trend. Now diving into the specific trends that are driving interest in DPUs, one is AI and network security concerns. Second one is the need for compute and IO density. So I'll start with the first one, the AI uh, security and networking acceleration. Really that's all about increasing the security profile and the performance of AI workloads in a given data center footprint. Now, when it comes to the compute and IO density needs, it's really driven by high performance workloads like SAP HANA. Uh, the, Space in data centers is always at a premium, and the more denser the system, the better it is for scaling up these high-performance workloads. Outstanding. So I think uh, this is a great summary right there, Neeraj, like is data centers are getting more and more dense, more throughput, more networking needs, more security needs are, are being asked for from data centers. And then there is also the issue with, you know, in, you know, infrastructure that's spread over, you know, cloud, edge, et cetera. So you, in this very distributed architecture and the re massive requirements of having dense data, data centers, that's where I think DPUs really shine, right? So it's so really, really kind of cool uh, that we're kind of all partnering together on this three companies. Uh, so now shifting over to you, Moti, for a second. If we go back to when we spoke last time, right? We spoke a lot at length about you know the distributed architecture that's you know that's becoming the trend now in data centers. Um, do you mind just for a quick refresher of the audience, right? It's been a while since I brought you back, right? Is why Nvidia is investing so much in DPUs? Yeah, yeah. So there are several reasons, of course, but the most important one is that actually what Niraj and you said about the distributed nature of the workloads today. Today, the deployments are hybrid deployments that uh, basically, if you want to uh, process a, a, an application, it's distributed between the on-prem, which is the VMware Cloud Foundation that we'll touch in a minute, 
and of course the cloud and the edge. And this actually creates a severe security concern compared to what was in the past. If you will associate it with the large amount of data like SAP HANA and much more with uh, data that associated with the Gen AI trend, then the combination puts a very heavy load on the network. And using those functions, running the networking function on a CPU can be done, but it's going to be extremely expensive and it's going to take much more power which is another concern in the market today, compared to run it over a dedicated processor, this is the data processor unit, that is not tend to run the applications themselves, but the services that are associated with the application, like the security. And this is why actually we work together, the three of us, the VMware, Lenovo, and, and, and NVIDIA, to make, to reinvent the data, the architecture of VCF, to have it running on a two processor. So there is two processors, which is, I would say, two servers in a box, one for the application, one of the services, and then you can uh, uh, enable a true uh, uh, zero trust security, reach the higher bandwidth, the highest bandwidth that you can get, and of course, the, to maximize the, R, uh, the RY. So with the DPU, as I mentioned in the previous uh, episode, the DPU enable isolation, which is the security, acceleration, and uh, of course, offloading a specific tasks from the CPU to the DPU. Fantastic. And it's so exciting, right? Particularly because, uh, you know, how we've architected the solution, right, of DPUs, right, of having an ESXi instance on, um, um, you know, DPU as well as on the CPUs, right? So and giving a very, very seamless lifecycle management process, right? So the same UI screens, the same infrastructure that all the admins are already used to, right? From a vCenter perspective, it's those same exact lifecycle management process uh, is what uh, you know we're able to give to the admin. So no additional work, no tools, no processes extra required for all of this management of the DPU uh, architecture, right? So which is very, very important for our admin audience, right? They don't want to start opening new portals or you know new software screens to work right so that's really good it's really good explanation of the dpu aspect Maybe if you don't mind what please could you please walk us through the recent announcement we just did with uh vcf and we spread eight update three yeah it's pretty significant because the latest release of the latest announcement that came with vSphere 8.0 update three basically enable high availability. And the high availability uh, is critical to the, for the mission critical applications, uh, of course, at uh, any enterprise uh, data center runs. The first release uh, that we did it like a month ago, uh, support two DPUs, one of them is active and the other one is uh, standby. But in the future, we are going, of course, to uh, move the standby to active active. So the performance is going to be practically doubled because it's going to support more VMs, more bandwidth, and the overall uh, performance and the ROI are going to be much better. But I would like also just to refresh the memory of the audience and to verify that also with one DPU that was released at the beginning of the year, we were able to achieve significant uh, performance boost compared to running it over a regular NIP. We were able to show that we can a 40% higher bandwidth, a 27% lower latency, or 30% better power consumption or power utilization, and of course to double the security rules that we uh, were able to do before. So overall, I would say that it uh, bring a lot of value and meet the demand for the new application uh, that are running today. Wonderful, right? So this is a very, very cool slide, right, that I really like. Uh, like to talk whenever we talk to customers. This is a slide that really, really, really jives very well with customers, right? So you have an active and then you have a standby DP, right? Giving you all the redundancy as well as, you know, giving you all the power, right? To have, uh, uh, you know, better network performance, network security, and then have a very, uh, you know, solid infrastructure. So there's always a standby available. So that's, uh, that's uh, to me, like this jives really well with where we've shown this to customers. Now, like, Regular DPUs, you know, what our admins love. Integrated workflows, 
same life cycle management process, you know, not like 15 different screens to go through, right? To now do all the life cycle management process that we know is so critical, not just for getting newer upgrades, but also for security, right? So that's where life cycle management process is so important, right? Not just the regular, you know, upgrades and updates, but also for security reasons, right? So this is stuff that admins tell us all about. And so I just wanted to kind of reiterate that. So now, uh, jumping in Neeraj, right? Um, <clears throat> can you share your thoughts on how Lenovo Think Agile, uh, VX appliances take advantage of this dual uh, architecture as well? Uh, and trick question, we already know the answer, but I'm still gonna ask this, is how hard is this deployment for customers and what's the feedback you're getting? Yep, so let me start with saying it's easy to deploy DPUs. We have already have some customers who've taken advantage of the integrations that Lenovo has worked on with VMware and NVIDIA to really make life easy for our customers, right? And that means not needing to go to a different management console that you're able to integrate your infrastructure management software. For example, Lenovo has the X-Clarity infrastructure management software that we've integrated into the vCenter console, right? To make life easy for the admins. So the lifecycle management of Think Agile VX is a key differentiating factor for us against other vendors. With that, I'll give you a specific customer example. We can't take their name, of course, but what they're looking to do with DPUs is really about accelerating NSX networking, right? They want to offload that to DPUs Particularly what they want to do is the execution of the firewall rules within NSX is what they want to offload. And they're excited to now run their high performance workloads and also do their firewall rule offloading with DPUs. Fantastic. So I think the cool thing here is, right? We've just gone, you know, we just literally announced this, uh, you know, this new um, dual DPU architecture. And we're already getting a ton of customers, right? Who are asking for this, right? And as I was kind of working with, uh, you know, our product management team, et cetera, you know, what I heard consistently, right, is enterprises have been asking for this for a long time, right? Like one DPU or, you know, architecture is not enough for them, right? So they always want single DPUs, you know, dual DPUs. And that's why it's so exciting, such an exciting announcement, right? That were the three companies are partnered together and Lino was kind of leading the charge right now. Right to have with the Think Agile systems. So, with that, um, you know we're coming to a close for this ep uh, of this episode uh, for this exciting di discussion on dual DPUs. Thank you so much for joining me today, Moti and Neeraj. Thank you as well, Shobi. It was great talking to you and looking for the next one. We have a great uh, roadmap and we are going to publish it soon. Thank you, Shobi and Moti. It's it's really. Great to see NVIDIA, VMware, and Lenovo come together to drive great solutions for our customers. Thanks again to both of you. And with that, we're coming to the end of this episode. Uh, we'll put some links out as part of the blog that comes out for this uh, this episode. Uh, and we, if you like this episode, join for the next one. This is your host, Shovik Bhutani, signing off. Have a fabulous day, evening, night, and weekend. Bye-bye uh, till next time. 